So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my uh, presentation topic is about action, go in and hit in Goa. So here's the outline of my presentation. I'll talk a little bit about um, the methods I use in this research, uh, the materials I'm referencing, and also how the elicitation starts and uh, how I deal with the data. And then I'll go straight forward to the topic, go and hit uh, in Goa. Uh, I will talk a little bit about how I design the question and uh, after collecting the data, my observation, and also how I analyze it. And at the end, I'll have a small conclusion. So uh, before the elicitation, I looked up a little bit of the existing uh, materials I have. Uh, first, I looked up Endangered Language Ar Archive. Uh, to have a little bit feeling of this language. And uh, Andrew also suggested me to read an article to uh, look at the linguistic background a little bit. But uh, to be honest, I uh, still like so so blind for me. I don't know what uh, Goa is. So uh, um, after the dissertation, I also referenced a lot of things from uh, Andrew's contribution, uh, the article from uh, Goa, the Goa noun, and also another article, a Goa story. I can. And about the elicitation, uh, I'm luckily have four times uh, to ask questions in these two months, and in total I collect hundred sentences. Uh, how I after collecting those data, how I deal with it is mainly just use paper and pen. Actually, <laughs> I'm very old fashioned, and, and also I use a little bit a lot for the transcription. I mainly use this program, and Felix, uh, it's a little bit pity because uh, we learned this a little bit too late and I don't have too much time to explore these programs. But I do use it because I found a file in Endangered Language Archive. So I got the whole lexicon collection to help me cross-check uh, the data I collected. Yeah, so about the elicitation, I have uh, four times and a First time I uh, focus on three basic uh, verb, go, pick, and open. And because I had no direction at the very beginning, so uh, after collecting like around 30 sentences, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so in the second station, I was thinking, okay, let's try out other verbs and see what could I find. And I found go and hit. There's some interesting things uh, inside. So uh, I decide in the next two elicitation, I just focus on these two verbs. So I, in this presentation, I will not talk about other verb, but only go and hit. So let's go to talk about go. So when I designed um, um, questions, I was thinking that uh, it's all according to the knowledge I had from other languages. And I'm thinking maybe uh, go this action, uh, when you talk about go to outdoor area, indoor area, or go and act another action, could be a little bit different. So I asked several questions, you can see three different examples. But to be honest, at the end, I can't even identify which is the verb because they are a totally different thing. Especially you can see the second example, I even think that uh, it's not my sentence because I couldn't, I looked up the lexicon collection and I couldn't find the word sister and hospital in this sentence. What I tried to word by word translated it, it's like girl, my grandma, girl of my grandma, and then I actually have no idea what is it. So it seems like some sentences are not really referring to the question I asked. Uh, that's why I started to get a little bit confused. And then I also looked up um, the article, a Goa story. And this there's a story is talking about Goa people uh, go to war and return home. So I'm thinking, okay, a story about moving different location, maybe I will find something inside. And there's actually some words is related to this action goal but are so different and I actually don't understand the real meaning of it. That's why I wanted to uh, go deeper to see if uh, I can find something. And in my, um, all the sentences uh, related to this action go, I found something very interesting. For example, here's three different sentences talking about go home. And I just realized that there's no really action, really a verb talking about go, but go home, there's a specific verb this word and I, I transcribe it a little bit different than Andrew transcribed it because mm, I'm not so good at working on phonology maybe, but uh, at least I recognize that this is like, it's the same words. So I uh, know that there's a verb is specifically talking about go home, but this it doesn't mean that go inside the house because there's another example here you can see, 
please go inside the house. And uh, you, there's a verb used da, and baradu is means in the house. And, and I was like, okay. So there's also a specific term when you talk about uh, go to uh, an, a specific area that's like the border. Or, how can I say that? And here uh, you can see Andrew is uh, closes as enter. So I'm thinking, okay, there's another way if you're talking about uh, emphasizing go to an area, you would use da, it's go inside. You can also see like when at the very beginning when I designed um, questions, I thought that maybe go to outdoor area or indoor area would be different. But in this case, even forest or house is the same. So this is one of my observation in my data collection. And another one is to move to another location. I try to put in this category. I know it's very confusing because go is, of course, move to another location. But, <laughs> but uh, for example, here you can see go out. I will go with you or we should go together. When I'm not really talking about uh, from where go to where, uh, I found that Hesinkia gave me this verb he, the stuff from the he. And I looked up the article, I can see that even Andrew is also uh, close in different way uh, based on the context. Like here, you can see the first uh, example is talking about travel. And then here you think about the work, walk. So um, I think this is just uh, when, when the sentence is uh, more talking about, uh, you will not be here and then we'll be moved to another location, we're more likely using this verb. And so, as you can see, I actually collected lots of uh, sentences related uh, using the English words go, but uh, came out a lot of different verb. And then I just go back to the very first question in the very first elicitation. I was just asking how to say go in go, and it was like a little bit too raw because I didn't build any sentences. But uh, actually, um, I have the audio. I don't know if they can hear that. Can they hear that? Go or hold, sending him away. Yeah, so uh, actually, hasn't he already told me that go has a right, different way to say and that's different meaning. But when I close it, I, I close it, uh, when I do the transcription, I, I transcript as go and good, uh, start with the ga sound. But when I look up the um, Felix file, actually, there's different ways, start with ka and ga. So it, I have the same problem in Arabic that I can't identify different sounds like ka, ga, and ga. Like, that's a little bit different, I know, but when I hear it, I couldn't rec recognize it. Go. So it could be I transcribed it wrong. That's why I couldn't identify the verb. And go back to the first example. Uh, this kakai, I always cannot find the verb. Is it like ka or ga? Like maybe I should uh, fact check again if I have opportunity to ask as, as in here more questions, maybe I can fix this uh, mistake. So after go, I will talk about hit in Goa. Same when I first designed the questions, I was thinking that uh, actually I have to correct something here. I shouldn't use person, but like a uh, living object, like uh, animate, subject. yeah, subject that uh, a living object could be person or animals and other thing, I don't know, other creature. But uh, here, I when I designed the question is uh, basically focused on a person hit an object, a person hit another person, object hit another object, and person is hit by another object. So uh, at the end, like these four different examples, they are all used the same verb too. But actually before all the recitation, before I decide to use, uh, uh, to focus on verb, I already know there's a verb called ta, because in a YouTube uh, course, we, we already give this example. But uh, you can see these four uh, um, sentences I asked, there's no word is related to this verb ta. Especially you can see example 17, I even like mocking the sentence. The father hits the son is so similar than the man to hit the boy, but it's using different verbs. So what is the reason? I uh, This is what I want to find out. And uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's because it's, it's ta, but just because the suffix and maybe it's changed and I can't identify the the, um, the vowel because I always confused with the tone, long vowel and short vowel. So I looked up, is it because of the suffix? But um, for example, here, I looked up the comparative. 
uh, form in uh, Goa, and I think it's not really that case. So um, there's also another uh, observation by the action hit a drum. So uh, like these three different sentences, hit the drum, I am hitting the drum, and I hit the drum. So similar uh, sentences, but uh, as a key, I give me different verb. Because uh, this is also a little bit tricky because I divide two, three different elicitations to ask similar question. So if I ask in a row like this, I think probably he will give me the same verb. But because I divide a different time, so uh, he, he gave me different sentences uh, using different verbs. And then I was thinking, okay, this action is toward a drum. Why using three different verbs? This is also make me uh, feel very confused. And I look up uh, the, the article from the Goa nouns. I also found that, okay, there's an uh, example for the boy hit a person, right? The boy hit me, the boy hit us, using ta and div. So what are the difference between these two actions? Um, and uh, because a lot of confusion, I look up this lexicon again, and okay, so small, so I try to make it bigger. So I just uh, search, uh, filter the keywords uh, hit and see if there's something I could find inside the collection. And I found this uh, dipta could be something related to the verb diff. And then I found that, okay, it's a noun or uh, uh, means hitting or uh, thrashing grind. And because I'm not so, uh, educated in this part, so I look up the YouTube video to see how people do it. It's actually like like this, okay. and I'm thinking, okay, maybe the action is related to moving the whole arm. This kind of hit. This is my first uh, guess. It's just according to my gut feeling, and also uh, I also found another verb called taha. It's a noun called hitting, and also there's a verb to hit. And I said, okay, so ta and tu is different verbs. They are not the same verb. At least I, I found something like this. So um, after this, I tried to put uh, this hit action uh, with different verbs in different category. I think um, when we use div, it's more like to beat, like the, this action is happening frequently. It's, uh, it's um, like multiple action, I would say in this way. And it's also because I think Ra'el asked this, uh, how to say to fight. And then Hezekiah said that uh, they using this verb. So I also looked up if I'm um, guessing this correctly. And I found in the lexicon is uh, translate to beat. And also this uh, example, the children fight and it means fight and uh, hitting each other is also using div. And also in my uh, examples here, they are fighting and stop beating your son is also using div. So I'm thinking maybe it's like uh, they are like this heating action is happening frequently, continuously. That's why uh, in this context, uh, as in here, we use div. And another uh, category I will use is just to hit in general. Here you can see it's using two. And uh, the example is if he hits you, hit him back. In this sentence, I'm not uh, talking about how to hit and how frequent it is. So I can see Hezekiah is using two. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe two is in general talking about this action hit because most of the sentence, I think at the end I collect like around 40 sentences with, with uh, this action hit and most of them are using two. So I think uh, when I'm when a sentence and when there's no other background story, uh, as in Kian, usually we use this verb. Kubra tu in a two week. Or if you mean kibira tu in a two week. What to make sure that everybody can hear is tu, not ta. <laughs> I'm really confused. Yeah. And so uh, what about ta? What is the difference between tu and ta? And this is just uh, my hypothesis because uh, I have to cross check in the future if I have chance. Because uh, I, after in the, very, uh, in the last elicitation, I tried to see if there's different when this heat action is using your body part or using another object. So I, I asked uh, how to say hit the drum with your hand and also hit the drum with the drumstick. And Hezekiah give me two different verbs, tu and ta. So I'm thinking maybe when you use ta, could be like because you are using something to hit on something. Yeah, so after talking about the action go and hit, I try 
trying to give a conclusion go I collect a lot of verbs and I think it's because based on different content and go I still want to uh, transcribe in this way although I don't know it's ga ka or ga <laughs> but uh, go I think it's talking about in general talking about this action go but when you use go it's like more like uh, what has a kid uh, that sends someone away I don't think it's really there's an actor send someone away but that person when using this uh, when going somewhere the uh, the content more emphasizing that that person will be away in this place and I, I think it's like just talking about to go somewhere intentionally. Da is talking about go inside a specific area. What is uh, is talking about uh, go home. And he, uh, as uh, what Andrew also uh, transcribed in a, uh, to uh, translate in a way that could be travel and walk. So I think when you see he, it means like uh, talking about that person is going to move to another location. And about heat. There's two ta and diff. I just uh, talk about this. Uh, two could be like in general talking about heat, this action, but not too much details inside it. And when you ta could be because uh, this heating action is uh, related to another object. And diff is like this action is uh, continuously frequently happening. And uh, thank you very much. This is all my conclusion. And here is the table of all the examples so you can go through all the sentences I show in this presentation, and here are the references I use in this research. Thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> um, I think that in this sort of presentation, you stumbled across two very sort of lexically interesting concepts, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, because we translate so much of them, and we've talked about this again and again today, this idea of using English and then getting something back that's not a one-to-one -one correspondence, but it's like you're giving one word and expecting one response, and then you get all sorts of different stuff. Mm. So I can tell you very quickly that with the word for like two versus D, I know, for example, that this is one of those special verbs, and you hit the nail on the head there, that when you do multiple actions of hitting, when hitting occurs multiple times, be that one person hitting many things, one person hitting a lot, or a lot of people hitting at the same time, mm. you get this other form. Mm. Whereas if it's just one hit, you get another form. In terms of your analysis of hitting something with something else, I've never looked at it this way. And mm. I've always wondered, why are these two verbs being used in different ways? Mm. So you're very right, we could be getting a distinction between Hitting with something, mm -hmm. which is quite common because go on men walk around with sticks often in their mm -hmm. hands. It could be hitting something with a stick versus hitting with their hand. That would probably be a significant difference. Mm -hmm. So now I want to go back and I want to look at it. But that essentially, I mean, we, you don't have to work here that you've gone through the Columbus and looked for it yourself. Yeah. So I really need to say I appreciate your approach in actually going back to further research sources and doing a bit of research and then later letting that feed into your questions. Mm -hmm. So it's much less random and it's much more sort of intentional questions. So really, really fantastic approach and I appreciate that. Thank you. And actually after non presentation, I think I should work with her because she's doing adverbs and like especially talking about the frequency and that kind of things is actually helping me. And I just feel a little bit pity because I supposed to do the analysis a little bit earlier so I can ask more. But yeah, well, I do in the future. Is a, full, is a full year of field methods. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. But that's a whole other question for another day. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any questions or feedback from anybody in the room or anybody in Zoom? Brad? Yeah. Um, I was looking for this the difference between these verbs that you said. So I have another another source. So I was looking for these verbs that you were mentioning, and I saw that you don't have this specific uh, lexicon as a source. So maybe I don't know. There's some slightly different translation, but for "dif" and "ta," I have the same interpretation. So it says "beat, strike, and hit," whereas for "two," it says "knock, hit, 
or pound with a blunt object, mash, smash, or crush, by example, pounding. So I don't know if they found in this lexicon some specific examples for two specifically. I don't know if this contradicts or anything your interpretation or your examples. But yeah, this was the only thing that I could find in this lexicon. I don't hear you. Is this uh, Joseph Mogwe's lexicon? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is good. Albert. There's probably, yeah, there's probably good uh, stuff in Mogwe's lexicon as well. Excellent. So it's nice to have these different sources. So um, I'm not really my this presentation because it's too much for doing. It's right. too much for just one presentation. You're completely right. Uh, because uh, when I looked at the article from two months, that uh, it's also talking about uh, not involved, but talking about smash and uh, cut and that, that kind of uh, action. And I'm thinking it's like, okay, there's the difference between them, and, but uh, there's too much for everybody. It's too much for one presentation. But this is the constant challenge. I don't have enough data, but you could have lots. Prof. Summer. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I mean, I learned such a lot of things. And what I found very fascinating was how, from, because I learned you did the licitation, and this is always problematic to kind of look for patterns and so on. So I think in the second slide already you went into the text material that is collected. And you went to find the glossings. And this also shows, as uh, we saw, that there, of course, we have already translations. So not go somewhere or go away or something, but uh, from the first understanding at the time when the text is collected and translated. So I learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Very amazing and uh, very good way of going to and fro. I mean, it needs solicitation on the one hand, start somewhere, but not getting, how can I put it? Because you said then you can have all these verbs, and that was good to have all this, although you said I didn't understand what it was, but that's exactly the productive confusion, so to say. And this, um, so making also this process um, of research that's very good for us. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Productive confusion. I quite like that term. <laughs>